Gary Blackpool away uh, this weekend. Just reflecting on that Carlisle game, that, that three points, the performance we saw there, is that sort of back to being the, the Gary Caldwell performance that we saw earlier in the season for you? Yeah, I don't think it's a Gary Caldwell performance. I think it's these players and their the quality that they have is coming out again. I think that's because of recent results, recent performances, the belief is coming back and, you know, players are playing with a freedom again, showing their quality. So uh, it's all credit to them. They are, you know, playing at a really high level, in position, out of position. I think we're showing a, a real competitiveness to try and keep the ball out of our net, to stop shots, to, to be aggressive. And, and that gets you, gets you results in this league. So uh, it's just the players that are really producing at this moment and they'll have to be at their very best again on Saturday against a really difficult opponent. I think in the past you've spoken about luck and in football you, you make your own luck uh, in terms of the fact that Carlisle you know, had, had a couple of really good chances, hit the post, but it didn't result in a goal. Is that progress for us in terms of the fact that we've perhaps made that luck for ourselves that they haven't gone in? Yeah, look, I think we totally dominated the game uh, up till they scored. Well, maybe five, ten minutes before that, we started to get a little bit deeper and fatigue was was creeping in. We we didn't have enough uh, finishers to come on and, and give the team energy at that moment. And that's something we need to address in January to give us, you know, in second halves, add five players to the pitch with energy and quality. Uh, so the team was, was kind of dropping, but up till... You know, the, the 75th, 80th minute, there was only one team on the park for me. We played fantastic football. We created good opportunities. We, we probably could have been more than 2-0 up. And that is, again, something we want to work on. When we score, we have to keep going for teams and, and try and finish the game off. But what, when the goal went in and, and the pressure came, I was quite happy with how we dealt with that as well. I think we, we stood up to it. Yes, we gave up some chances, but... Veal was there when we needed him. He was safe in terms of his handling. The defenders stood up at moments and, and defended the box well. So you're going to need that. And, and especially on Saturday against a, a really top team at home, we're going to need uh, in defensive moments to, to suffer. We're going to need to stick together. Uh, and, and to see that against Carlisle in, in a pressure game was, was really good and really important that we came through that. Three very positive home results recently, whereas I think the performances away from home haven't necessarily matched the result. You mentioned Blackpool's home form there. How do we you know, make sure that the a performance that's worthy of three points can, can end in a result that's actually three points? Yeah, something we're going to speak about today as a group. Uh, I think you have to be prepared for what's coming. I've, I've been to a couple of games, Perks has been to a few games as well at Blackpool because we're up north sometimes, we've we've had that luxury to go to some of their games and uh, you see a team at home with a clear identity, you see a home crowd that, that uh, expects to win games, they are the best team in the league at home, so we're under no illusions how difficult it's going to be, but we have to know as a group what it takes to win in these big games, you have to suffer. You have to have periods where we're not going to be the dominant team and we have to stand up in those moments, but we also have to play with personality. We have to play with a belief in what we're doing and how we can hurt them, that at moments we're going to dominate the game and we're going to play on the front foot. And it's that understanding of the, the ebb and flow of the game and what's needed in certain moments. So we spoke a lot about that this week. We're going to speak more today. Uh, but it's, I think winning away from home, it's not just about turning up and, and playing a team off the park. There's many different aspects to the performance that we need to get right. And if we do, I believe we can win the game. One player doesn't make a team, of course, but you know when you've got a player like Jordan Rhodes, who I think it's 15 goals in 19 games for Blackpool this season, it's quite clear where their biggest threat comes from. Yeah, look, I, th I think they're a very good team. Uh, I think they're a well-coached team. Uh, they, they have a clear identity on, on how they play. They, they're not one-dimensional. They can play through you. They can play over you. They have speed in the team. They have quality in between lines and Dembele. And I think Jordan Rhodes has gave them a, you know, a player that can finish their attacks and, and ultimately win you games. I think early season they were, they were quite similar, but they didn't get the results because they were missing chances and didn't have that goal scorer to, to get them the goals. But now they have that. So we know 
what they're going to do. They've had a game midweek where they changed pretty much the whole team, so we're pretty clear on what team they're going to play. We know how they're going to play, but stopping them is a, a very difficult thing to do. So we've worked hard this week as a group. We're going to work today again tactically on, on what's needed in and out of position. And, and like I said, hopefully the players are ready to go and, and play with personality because we're going to need to do that in a, a really difficult stadium in terms of the noise and the atmosphere, but a stadium where they expect to win and, and we have to go and kind of upset that. They got a very good result away at Nottingham Forest in the FA Cup last weekend. How much can you take from that game in terms of you know, style, set up and how they played? I know because when you go away to a Premier League side, you, you probably set up differently to how you would in the league game. Yeah, I don't think we can take much from that game. I think it shows they're a very good team and they, they can cause even a Premier League team uh, problems. But I think the way they set up away uh, there and, and how they set up a, at home is totally different. So we have to take you know their home form and their home performances in League One. That's how they're going to be. Uh, they play on the front foot. They have, like I said, a clear identity in what they, they, they do in position. Um, we have to be ready to stop that. But I think there's areas where we have to be clear on how we're going to keep the ball and how we're going to hurt them as well. So... Uh, we have to get that information into the players, but the players have to then go on Saturday at three o'clock and have real personality and belief that they can go there and win. And that comes from the preparation, that comes from the understanding of, of how they're going to do that. I'm looking at January now, don't worry. You've only got, I think, two and a half weeks of me asking you this. Um, where are we in terms of bringing players in? Obviously, Luke Harris is in, Ryan Trevitt back to Brentford, and we wish him the best. Uh, what, what more can you tell us at the moment in terms of bringing players in? Yeah, Trev's obviously went back and it's, it's a big blow because I think he was a, a player that's had a, a brilliant season. I think he was a player that the supporters really took to and seen his quality. He's left, given us some fantastic moments this season and we thank him and we thank Brentford for that. I think we've shown we look Harris. We've, we've brought in a player of equal quality uh, and, and in his debut, I thought he was amazing. Uh, to, to come in as an 18-year-old kid, having not trained with the team much and produced that level of, of performance. He's, he's disappointed he didn't score. And again, I think that's great that he's, you know, he always wants more. Uh, but he, he you know, straight away had two chances in the first five minutes. But then on top of that, I loved his booking, that you know, he played with an aggression. I loved then his, his kind of understanding of how to then play the rest of the, the game on a booking. It didn't stop him pressing, it didn't stop him tackling, but he understood what uh, situations he could go into. And then even late in the game, we had to drop him back into uh, the six to see out the game. And he had that tactical understanding of what that looked like. So we brought a fantastic player into the club to replace uh, Ryan. And then the rest of January, I think we have to bring in players of looks uh, kind of standard and quality. And if we do that, then I'm sure we'll be a, a much better team in the second half of the season. In terms of Admiral Musgrave, is there anything you can tell us about that? Are we still in communication with Luton about what the best route forward is? We're in communication, yeah. He's injured at the moment and will be injured for, for you know, kind of most of the season. Uh, we're, we're not sure entirely what that looks like. We, we're in communication with Luton on that and we'll assess that throughout January and when we kind of get clarity on it, we'll, we'll give you an update. Strikers are the hardest position to bring in in any transfer window. I think every manager will tell you that. Every club's probably fighting for the same player. Are we are we close to a striker, perhaps? Uh, no, <laughs> but we are fighting. We are, uh, you know, putting our name into the ring for for these players. But I think it's it's not as easy as people think. It's we have to, you know, like you say, all these teams are looking for the same player, and we have to. Uh, show our club and show what we can provide. I think, you know, we're not just looking for one, we're looking for probably a couple of, of strikers and it's important we get the right one. I think, uh, like I said, we look, the quality that we brought in is is there. You can see it straight away. So we have to make sure every player we bring in has that level of quality and it's not easy to do that because when you're doing that, you're going for the very best uh, of strikers and you know, that changes as well throughout January. Players that weren't available become available. Players that were available suddenly aren't available. So you have to be flexible. You have to be ready to react. And, and we are, you know, myself, Marcus, Malcolm, in communication every day, 
looking at different players, different options, but also speaking to the ones, the targets that you know every club is trying to get. And like I said, hopefully, come the end of the window, we have strikers and strikers that make us better and strikers that create competition within the group. Is it a bit like a, a game of chess? It's a bit like a school disco, Craig. <laughs> When you were fourteen, fifteen, and a, you know your th- the slow dance comes on, and you're you're thinking of what girl you want to dance with, then you know you've got to pick one, and if you go for the best one, you might not get that. But who do you go for? You know, do you remember the days? Even Holloway quit, wasn't it? 